flick shake warm fish with a flick shake hook too from Jackal. It's finesse fishing today. And here's a good tip. I'm fishing on a pretty featureless canal. I got some wood in the water here. I had one branch in the water here. And I had three fish come out from under that branch to hit that worm. So as you can see, if you if you can find a spot where you have one little feature in the water, definitely don't pass it by. It's always worth fishing it. And there's the end result. Small fish, but like I said, we're finesse fishing today with soft plastics and looking for anything that'll bite. Wow, that might be the smallest butterfly I've ever seen. Doesn't seem to be afraid of me. Look at that. That must taste good or something. Another tip I want to share with you. When, when you're fishing these real light, soft plastics, uh, the same can go for a drop shot uh, or a wacky worm. If you're if you're using really light tackle on a wacky worm, and you're fishing it very slowly. Uh, sometimes, if you're fishing uh, a drop shot off the front of a boat, say, and you're fishing directly below you, where you're, you're constantly jigging the rod, your arm can get really fatigued. Uh, instead of holding, if you, most guys will hold the rod like this. So the weight of the reel is in the middle of your hand and then when you're fishing and you're moving the rod you know you're constantly moving it up and down it's a lot of fatigue on your wrist if you move your grip to the front side of the reel it takes the weight off of your hand uh, so your your wrist can it's not as fatigued it, it's much more comfortable to use it like that uh, also you can use the, the back side of your arm to support the, the, the back side of the rod uh, it's much much easier. It's much less fatiguing on your arm and on your hand and on your wrist Especially if you're fishing all day if you watch a, a tournament guys like uh, Aaron Martin's the guys like the fish drop shot and finesse Style fishing a lot. That is how they do it. And that is how they can fish You know five six, you know it, during the tournament they're practicing they're fishing eight nine hours a day or Even at a tournament where they're fishing six or seven hours a day, you know, they can fish all day long with no fatigue uh, that's that's a much better technique a lot of times they'll use their finger on the rod. like this is a graphite rod So it's very very sensitive. I'm using a uh, six pound braid Which is super super light and again, it's very sensitive and if you have your finger on the rod You can feel every little touch and tap on that on that bait uh, Even if you can't see it like the water I'm fishing today is pretty murky. So uh, Instead of fishing your rod like this move your hand in front of your reel and it gives you a quick act You know you can strike it real quick uh, and you've got good sensitivity in the in the rod to feel any bites Here's another good spot to fish again. You can see I'm fishing the canal here. It's a lot of canals are pretty featureless uh, They can be pretty tough uh, if You see underneath that the, the tree here on this side where the tree overhangs the water That's a dynamite place to fish because especially when it's like today when it's sunny predatory fish will hang underneath that tree and they'll stay in the shade because the shade gives them an advantage. Uh, another spot here you can see just in the water here where the point comes out. That uh, would be right here. You can see where the point comes out into the water. And it's sandwiched between the end of the tree and the top of the point. That will be a good place to fish. Uh, a lot of times a fish will sit either on that point or on the face of the point in the shade uh, and wait for bait fish to come by. You can see on this side of it where it mounds out into the water and then you've got a dead tree here on this side and again more overhanging bush on this side right here that will be another good spot to fish all right I was just fishing this uh, pool behind me here in the in the river I've seen a couple of small smallmouth in there I lost one smallmouth I seen a real nice probably two and a half three pound smallmouth I was using this little uh, Kitex swim bait in a baby bass color. You can see it's like a half brown, half neon. And I am convinced that he's seen that the braided line. Uh, I was fishing the canal earlier on, which is right up over the bank of the river. They run side by side. Now the canal has murky water, so the braided line is not so much of a big deal. 
but the river here, you can see behind me, is crystal, crystal clear. And that small, that big smallmouth, he spotted that braided line right away because he came right up to the bait and then he was about a foot from it and then he veered right off. Uh, now I've caught a lot of fish on this little bait and I know it works and I am 100% convinced that he's seen that braid in that, in that crystal clear water and he took off. So another tip would be that if you're fishing crystal, crystal clear water, don't fish direct to, you know, braid direct to your hook. Uh, even the, the, you can get braid that's, you know, white and all, all those sorts of different color and it's, you know, crystal braid and they say you can't see it in the water. Small mouth is pretty damn cagey and I'm, I would want to fish it with a fluorocarbon leader or a mono leader. Uh, something that's much harder to see in the water. That's, that's a, another good tip for you there. You're fishing clear, clear water like that. You know, it is a tough day of fishing when I am glad to have caught that. As you can see here, the water's mega. On another foot and a half, and there'll be no water in this canal. It'll be empty. You can see the bank exposed all the way down. Uh, we took this little fish here on a Kitek little swim bait. He's been eating good. Look at his belly on there. Freaking A. Good for him. All right, let's let him go. Okay, we'll show you the setup I was using here for that little fish. As you can see, you ripped it. Ripped it open. It is a Kitek little swim shad. These are excellent baits. I just have it on a regular uh, Z-Man jig head. If I can turn it around to the camera there. There it is. And I have it on a, a little wire trace because these waters are loaded with little pike and pickerel and they will bite the line off and it's not worth losing your lures or you know injuring a fish over not having a little trace on it. You, you can barely see that trace. This is uh, it's 15 pound tieable wire. Uh, it, it's steel so the teeth can't cut it and you know you can barely see it. I'm sure you know if you're fishing ultra ultra clear water like I mentioned before with the smallmouth you know they probably will see that you're using a lure like this so that you're constantly moving uh, you're not it's not like a worm where your worm is sitting on the bottom and they can get a good you know real good look at it this is constantly moving through the water so it's a reaction type bait but this little bait man that catches fish that is a, this a, they make larger versions of it too uh, it's made by Kitek that little fat shad works really well Okay, I'm going to interrupt this absolutely stellar day of fishing uh, to give you another tip about using finesse fishing equipment. Uh, if you're using spin casting reels like this, uh, you got to be really careful. I know you can get backlashes and stuff with bait casters. Uh, a problem with these reels is that when you cast out, like so, I cast it out. I see a lot of people doing this to close the bail arm. Don't do that. Uh, that causes loops in your line. And eventually what it'll do is when you cast it, it will catch on the loop and it will pull the loop off uh, of the spool and you'll get, lot, you'll get wind knots and stuff in your line and it's terrible. Uh, what you want to do is when you cast it and your bail arm is open, don't crank the reel handle to close it. Manually close the arm and manually loop the line up into the, into the hook and then retrieve your line. Uh, if you do that, you will reduce your, your loops in your line and you won't get as many tangles on your spool that you have to pull the line off and, and you know clear that tangle. It's a real pain in the backside. But also another tip, some rods like this little Daiwa does not come with a hook keeper. Uh, a lot of people will hook the lure into the ring. Don't do that, because if you're using guides that are not that are that are plastic guides, some of the rods have steel guides, and that's okay. Uh, but if you have even with the steel guide, you've got to be very careful because what will happen is the barb on the hook and the hook point will notch that guide. Uh, if you hook it outside the guide like this, that's okay. But if you put it inside the guide and you notch that guide when you draw your line through, especially like this, this is only like five or six pound 
uh, Suffolk smoke line. If you, if you have a little nick on that guide and you draw the line through it, it will cut the line. And it only has to cut a little bit. It doesn't have to cut right through it. Uh, braid also will cut braid like that. What you want to do is get a, a hook keeper or a bait keeper. And that way when you reel up your hook, you can put the hook inside the bait keeper. And that way it doesn't affect your guides and, and it keeps the hook out of the way so it doesn't get tangled up when you're transporting your pole. So those are a couple of good tips. See, you thought I was kidding about not having any water. Look at this, this is the canal. Now I would say it's gone down two and a half feet in a week. The water was, you know, low. I was fishing here last week too. The water was already low, but now it's super low. Pretty soon I'll be fishing. Here's something you don't see every day. Hovercraft, huh? I need one of those. Well, I am pleased to report. This is the first perch I've ever taken on a lure. Nice yellow perch, has his fin up there, nice red fins on. Cut him on that little Kitex swim bait on the quarter ounce Z-Man jig head. That is a pristine fish, beautiful. Look at his red fins and everything. I am well pleased with that, well pleased with that. Took him out of a pretty barren section of water here. As you can see, you know, my water's down. I'm having a lot of problems with no rain, but that is a result. That's a beauty. All right, let's let him hook him a little bit. Just a couple of days ago, where I'm standing, it was underwater. Look at the fish rising out here. There's a bunch of them. I don't know what they're eating. They're eating something on the top, but they're rolling. Right there, there's more. Smallmouth, probably. There's another one. There's two more. There's more. There's another one. Oh, that's sickening. There's another one. Look at them, they're rising on something. Oh, what? What do you do? I was down here yesterday and I tried fishing. There's another one right there. I tried all sorts of baits in here. I couldn't get them to eat anything. They're eating something natural. There's a big rise there. A couple of days ago where I'm standing was underwater. Actually, you can see down here for a little bit. 
There's a big rock break here. Pole wrecker boulders. Look at look at these fish. That's amazing. And there it is. My first ever river smallmouth. Beautiful. Alright, let's let him go quick. Cut this on a little blue fox, number one, rainbow trout, like a little par trout. Finesse, crankbaiting, well, crankbait slash spinnerbait. The, the crankbait version of it would be this. Man, I'm well pleased with that. Let's try for another one. Well, I am sorry I didn't catch that on video. <laughs> I was fishing this one hole I have where I showed you where the bass were jumping earlier on. And I had tried a couple of different baits. I caught that one bass. I missed another one. Uh, I changed this little Rebel crankbait. Again, it's a trout imitator. Uh, I don't think there's wild trout in this river, but there's, they do stock this river with trout. Uh, I don't think they put fingerlings in. I think they stock it with regular trout. Although, you know, who knows, there could be, but uh, you know, fry trout and stuff in there as well. And there's minnows and stuff too. Uh, so obviously they were hitting minnow baits. Uh, I got a real good fish on this. He must have just got the rear treble. He freaking launched up out of the water and spit that bait out like it was nothing. Uh, but it was a decent fish. Uh, we'll try and move on and see if we can catch something else. Okay, another thing to consider. I've had fish today that will follow this bait, but won't take it. Uh, they can follow it from the one side of the canal right over to the other. They'll follow right behind it a couple of inches and they won't take it. Uh, sometimes what I'll do is I'll use a scent stick. Uh, this is one I got with the mystery tackle box. Another one in my bag here. This is a KVD one. One is a craw, one is a shad oil. Usually they use some sort of fish oil or crawfish oil. Uh, these ribbed baits too are, can be good for that because the, when you rub the scent into it, the rib the ribbing holds the scent. Does this make a difference? I don't know, but anything is worth a try. Give it a rub of a scent stick. A lot of times these contain fish oils. Definitely don't want to leave it laying around because if your wife or girlfriend or boyfriend uses this for chapstick, they are not going to be your friend. Trust me. Put that back in the fishing bag and we're ready to go. Uh, another thing I wanted to mention too when you're finesse fishing is make sure that you have the drag on your reel set properly. Uh, you can see that there's a drag adjustment here for the line so when I tighten it or loosen it, Obviously, if I open it, the drag will get looser. Uh, you want to make sure that's set properly because if you do get a large fish and you strike at it and the drag is too tight, he's just going to sleep. You're using, you know, real light line, less than 10 pound line, four, five, six pound line. Uh, that line will break. It will just break right off. It, the line, this is monofilament. Fluorocarbon has a little less stretch. Braid has no stretch. Uh, so it's pretty important when you're using braid. But... Uh, with mono you've got a little bit of stretch and the, the rod action here too, I'm only using medium class rods and then they've got fast tips so the tip is real flexible. Uh, that gives you a little bit of a cushion too. Now obviously I'm not fishing for huge fish, uh, I'm just trying to get bites at this point. It's, it's uh, end of summer, the waters have been fished hard all summer, uh, people have been taking fish, there's not a lot of fish in some waters, uh, can be pretty tough. 
So finesse tactics work when regular power fishing tactics that would consider spinner baits, crank baits, uh, you know, jig fishing with big baits, top water fishing with big baits just doesn't work. Uh, those days are, are over. So make sure that the drag is set and that you have enough drag there that if something good does take it that uh, it's not going to snap your line. That's important when you're using light line. Especially with braid because braid has no stretch. Although like I said with braid you should be using uh, like a fluorocarbon leader or a mono leader and that will give you a little bit of give on it as well. Uh, and you want to use soft action rods. Usually I'm using 1500 class reels, small class reels. This one here, this one I believe is a Daiwa. This one is a Bass Pro Shop one on a Daiwa rod. These are both Daiwa rods. Uh, this one has braid on it. This is Visi braid. And then I'll run a, a fluorocarbon leader. I'll, in this instance, I've colored the braid so it's harder to see. The braid doesn't matter so much in, in like I said, in stained water, but in clear water, or very clear water like that river, you'd want uh, a leader on there just so the fish can't see that lead, you know can't see that line this line is for bite indication but it's easier to see it for me to see it not for the fish to see it especially if I'm fishing deep water I'm, I'm fishing deep water today it's super super shallow but hopefully those tips help you out all right let's get back to fishing well that is a result for me right there today Beautiful perch, absolutely stunner. Took it right out of the blue. Came up from that, and there's a, on the bottom of this pond here, or on the canal, there's a, it's something like, like matted weed. He must have been laying right down in the weed. He came right up and took it. That's a good look at him. Again, he took my little Kitex swim bait. Beautiful fish, beautiful. Man, he hit that hard too. Hammered it. All right, easy, easy, easy. Let's let you go. All right, one last look. There he is. All right, let's put him back. Nice. Okay, one more technique I want to share with you guys before I have to pack it in for today because I'm starting to lose light. Uh, this is a soft minnow bait. It's made by Jackal. It's called a clone fry. You can get it in a bunch of different colors. You don't have to necessarily use this. They use eye motion lures and stuff too. You can see it doesn't have a paddle tail. It just uses a regular straight tail. So it doesn't displace a lot of water. That means that when the bait is moving through the water, it doesn't create a lot of vibration, a lot of noise. Uh, sometimes, especially the water I'm fishing today, is no deeper than two foot at the deepest. Uh, a lot of times a very noisy bait can spook fish, especially bass. Pike are not so picky, perch sometimes are not so picky uh, they, because it, they're, they're, they can be very aggressive at times. Other times not so aggressive and that, that's, at those times the quieter bait can be more useful. Uh, this is also rigged on what's called a nose hook rig. You see the little bell weight in the front. Now I have it rigged on a trace, obviously. This is designed for bass, and for bass you don't need a trace, but for pike, eh, you do need a trace. So like I said, even with fluorocarbon, they'll bite right through it. Uh, you can see it's got a little weight, a little bell weight on the front. It's a tungsten weight. Then it's got a little wire guard uh, to protect the hook from weed. It's not real, real strong. It's just a real small single hook. Very sharp, very small barb. Uh, when you flutter this to the water, it makes a very realistic action. Uh, it's almost like a dying fish. If you work the bait properly, just give it little rod twitches, lift the rod, lift the rod, let it swim, let it sink. And then when it sinks, it stands up on the bottom like this and you can let it sit there and twitch it just like a shaky head worm. Uh, a lot of times I get fish will bite when it's sitting on the bottom. They'll come down and just hammer it. You know, after it passes them by and you just let it flutter down like it's dying and it sits on the bottom and then they just come up and it'll suck it right in. Uh, this technique works really well. Again, the, the hook, this particular lure is made by Jackal and the hook is made by Jackal. It's called a nose rig hook. Uh, it's for their eye motion series of lures, which are like super finesse uh, for bass fishing, especially for highly pressured waters. 
but I've had a lot of success when it works really well. Well, there he is, species number three for the day, Mr. Chain Pickerel, the predator in miniature. Took my uh, the, the Kitek, the little Kitek swim bait again. That's been hit, popular today, and now we're gonna let him go. As you can see, I don't have my finger in his mouth because he has got lots and lots of razor sharp little teeth. So we're gonna let him go real quick. Okay, here it is. Biggest tip for the whole video. If you are fishing in a location and you've tried a couple of different techniques, you've tried a couple of different baits, and they're not biting, they're probably not there. So move somewhere else. Keep moving, keep mobile, uh, keep moving until you find the fish. Uh, a lot of times you can fish a lot of empty water and within you know a half a mile you could fish three quarters of that stretch a half a mile and not not catch anything and get to one particular spot and there's fish all over it and you catch a fish every cast sometimes that's how it is uh, keep mobile and keep moving till you find the fish and the same would be would go not just like when bank fishing today but the same would go if you were fishing from a boat if you're fishing from a boat and you're not catching anything move till you find the fish uh, it's common sense but some people you know they will uh, get stuck on where they got fish before and go back to that spot and the fish may not be there especially for a river that's especially true for river fishing uh, the conditions in a river can change very quickly even overnight they can change and they also change seasonally uh, like for summer to where the water is low till winter uh, where the water is higher you get flood water snow melt things like that you know all that all those things change the, how the water conditions are so move till you find the fish all right it's time to head home Uh, last few days have been pretty tough fishing uh, low water storms you know changes in t temperature changes in pressure all of that can affect fish uh, rising water levels falling water levels uh, there's a hundred different things you have to consider when uh, you know you're trying to catch them uh, d yesterday I was fishing and man I got a couple of fish to bite uh, missed a bunch of fish they were short striking Today was exactly the opposite. There were a couple of fish that followed, a couple of fish that short strike, but it was a lot of fish that took the bait really hard, very aggressively. Uh, we had rain this morning, just a little bit, not, not enough, no more than we need. Uh, but like I said, uh, when conditions are tough, you have to change your techniques. You have to you know, change your ways that you're gonna fish, uh, change your baits. If you're not catching, try something else. Don't keep trying the same thing. If you know there's fish in that location and they're not biting, keep changing until they bite. Uh, you know, switch your tactics, uh, switch your techniques, switch your baits. Uh, I had three different hits today in the river. I was also fishing the river and that's right next to me here. Uh, I'm on a path between the Lehigh River and the, and the canal. So I can switch between one and the other. Uh, I got three different bites on the river. I had one on a crankbait, one on a spinnerbait, and I had one on a topwater bait. So it just goes to show you, you, you have to change and adapt and let the fish tell you what they want. Uh, it's, I mean, it, 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 there are times when they won't bite anything. Like that yesterday was a prime example of that. Fishing was very hard, very tough, and they just would not bite. No matter what, I, th I could change that bait a hundred times, they wouldn't have bit it. Uh, today was a different story. It was like a light switch that came on. I uh, caught a couple of nice fish, had a good day. Uh, so the, the saying goes, don't ever give up. Uh, like Mike Iconelli says, don't ever give up. Uh, keep changing, keep adapting, and just keep plugging away at it. It's like anything else, you work at it, eventually you're gonna get, you know, get the result you want. Uh, I hope the help tips where I gave you were helpful, and uh, I'll see you on the next video.